People have been carving round objects on a wood lathe for centuries. The tools have evolved, but the process is still the same. You, you put a piece of wood between two points and it spins and you carve it as it turns. Hi, I'm Joe with Family Handyman. Today, we're gonna make a couple of easy rolling pins. Let's get started. Before we start making sawdust, let's talk a little bit about wood turning safety. First up, you never wanna have anything dangling. No, take off all your jewelry, tie back your hair, and roll up your sleeves. For spindle turning, you can wear just safety glasses. But if you're bowl turning, you always wanna wear a face shield. And when you're sanding, protect your lungs with a dust mask. Although you can turn any kind of wood on a wood lathe, when it comes to spindle turning, you wanna to lean towards choosing hardwoods, such as cherry, maple, walnut. Exotic woods like purple heart, mahogany, and ipe turn really well. Anything with a tight grain pattern works well for spindle turning. First step in mounting the turning blank on the lathe is to find the center on both ends of your piece. Draw lines from corner to corner before attaching the spur chuck. Next, we wanna attach the spur chuck to the turning blank, but before you do that, give yourself a hole right in the center on each end. Then you just take your spur chuck Put it right in the center, tap it in with a mallet. Now that we have the spur chuck attached to the turning blank, just simply slip the spur chuck into the headstock spindle, slide the tailstock so your live center attaches directly to the center of your turning blank. Setting the height of your tool rest is different for each tool. For these carbide cutting tip tools that we're using, you wanna have your cutting tip directly in the center of your turning stock. The distance between your turning blank and your tool rest will change as you turn. But to start out, I like to put it about an inch away. There are different turning speeds for roughing, shaping, and sanding. Refer to this chart here. All right, time to start roughing this piece out. I'm gonna turn this square piece of wood into a round cylinder. One thing to remember, always make direct contact with your tool on your tool rest before it makes contact with the turning blank. For roughing my turning blank, I'm gonna set my speed between 900 and 1,000. It's okay to take your time with this. Don't be in a hurry. Just apply even pressure with the tool, moving it from left to right and right to left until it becomes a cylinder. Once you get it to the thickness you want, be sure to turn your lathe off before moving to the other half and continue rough turning. This first project is gonna be a French rolling pin that's tapered on both ends with no handles, but I first need to turn it into a cylinder first. Now that I have the block turned into a cylinder, I like to mark the center, then I work one half of the piece until it's the shape I'm looking for. Remember, this is a French rolling pin, so it tapers down on each end. Then I copy the dimensions to the other half until it's symmetrical. Using the detailing tool, I shape both ends to how I want them to look. Then I move on to sanding the piece. All right, now I have it all sanded. All I have left is add some food safe oil and then I'll cut the ends off with a saw. A Japanese pole saw works well for parting off the ends. All right, I'm gonna sand the ends and put some oil on there and that one's finished. 
We're gonna move on to making a rolling pin with handles. Just like before, I find the center on both ends of the turning blank, then I attach the spur chuck and mount it to the lathe, then proceed to turn it into a cylinder. All right, now that we have this rough down to a cylinder and sanded, it's time to lay out for the handles. First, I wanna find the center and then divide that in half and that'll be the width of my rolling pin and then the rest will be handles. All right, now that I have it all laid out, I'm gonna start sculpting the handle, only I'm gonna to switch tools to this round cutter. Again, starting on one end, I sculpt the handle to how I want it to look and feel in my hand. Once I'm satisfied with it, I copy it to the other side. Remember to always take your time and don't be in a hurry. Again, using the detailing tool, I shape the ends of the handles while creating a groove, getting it as close as I can before it's ready to part off. Now I have the handles all turned. All I need to do is sand it and put some oil on it and then part the ends off. We're finished. All right, that wraps up our turning project today. I really like how this purple heart sets off this French rolling pin. You know, for a beginner and wood turner, this is really a doable project. Now we're ready to make some pies. For more projects like this, head over to familyhandyman.com.